The Sky Trail is a challenging 80 mile hike through some of the most stunning landscapes the world has to offer. From windswept ridges to rugged coastal paths, join me as I take on one of Scotland's most picturesque trails, tackle the ever-changing weather and take in some of the most spectacular views my eyes have ever seen. This is the Isle of Skye and this is the Sky Trail. Hello, welcome to another video and welcome to the sky up. <laughs> ah, oh, fell over, tripped. Big intro trip. Start again. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm too excited. <clears throat> and welcome to the Sky Trail, arguably Scotland's most picturesque multi day hike. It has taken a lot for me to get just to even get to the start point, which was the red telephone box on the north of the island. We're gonna head further north now. It's taken a lot for me to just get here. So this hike, whew, it means a lot to me. I've got two days of relatively good weather. So we'll be able to take on the big ridge in decent weather. And then it's forecast to change on me, but I'm here and I'm here for it all wind, rain, snow, everything. I'm excited and I hope you'll join me for what hopefully will be an amazing journey. I'm hopefully gonna be wild camping every night no matter what the weather is. That should enable me to do some big, some big days, some big miles. The first gate of the trail, a little metal number. Oh yeah. Have a listen. Yes. Lovely stuff. Hey ho. Just a bit of rope. Not bad. I'm not mad at it, I love that. I love the smoothness of this bit of timber here. Look at that, beautiful. This is a former Coast Guard lookout overlooking the Little Minch, an important shipping channel. The hut was once maintained around the clock and offers excellent shelter on a windy day. Today it is maintained by the Mountain Bothy Association as a shelter for walkers and is a wonderful place to escape the elements while scanning the seas for passing whales porpoises and even the odd massive oil rig being towed through the minch. The location is spectacular with great vertical cliffs just to the north plunging down a hundred meters and magnificent views across the sea to the mountains of the Isle of Harris with Todden being the most prominent. Hey, mate. You're just finishing or starting something? Speak English. Finishing. Oh, you're just finishing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the yeah. Sky Trail. Yeah, nice mate, nice. I'm just starting. Okay. Beautiful, isn't it? It is. It is. It's a nicer place to finish than it is to finish any other place. It's a bit more built up. Yeah, I know. I like to start uh, uh, the lowlands and then up and up. Open, yeah. Step up, yeah. yeah. So. Glorious. Well, well done, mate. Nice one. difficult to do any bits to camera because it's so windy <laughs> but it's so beautiful just rugged landscape mate it's beautiful this is the forecast I have to just deal with whatever's here now and put in front of me and what's been put in front of me is a lot of wind which is a game changer because I was trying to I was going to try and get on the top of all this stuff go above and beyond today and then camp on top of that huge ridge. It'll be too dangerous in these winds and it'll only, could, you know, it could get worse in the night. So, we'll see, we'll see what it's like when I get there. It's noisy. Is he gonna need any help? Yeah. 
Oh, five out of ten. There's plenty of room in there, isn't there? We've started with a few and there's all that to go in. Great. It's where you all end up, innit? If you're lucky, if we're lucky. In there or scattered in big blue, whatever you <laughs> choose your poison. Broom handle. Go on, go on. Ah, oh, it doesn't have the weight on it to. It needs a little bit of assistance, but I appreciate that. Nice. Four miles deep. Just enough to like blow out the cobwebs, get the legs moving. I'm in it now. I'm in a good flow. And despite the wind, it is pretty glorious. The clouds keep coming across, but. When it's like this, uh, it's not great for filming because of the wind, but it keeps the midges away and it keeps me cool. So, just little turquoise patches, mate. It's like being in a broad or something. It's, it's absolutely stunning. Bit of a head scratch of that. But I was like, what? what the? Ah, this way. And round here down by the coast now. You'd think there'd be loads of waves, wouldn't you? But not with all the wind, but there's not. Beautifully calm. Right, heading up here. And uh, judging by the map, it's a bit like this, a bit undulating. I'm ready for it, mate. I don't, it can be as hard as it likes for now. For the first day, just have it. See all the flying beasties? They're just down here in the shaded area. Which is good because if this wind wasn't here, they'd be taking shelter in my face. It's the definition of a rugged coastline. You've really got to have a head for heights. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> oh mate. Just look forward, just look forward. I don't have a head for it. <laughs> Somewhere you could filter the water. I mean, you'd need a filter because it is coming off farmland, but you could use that if you want to drink not for me not today i've got whatever that highland water bottle is two liters or something and then i've got my that smart water bottle which is i don't know how much <laughs> nearly a liter between that you know whatever but what i do is i keep uh, i put an electrolyte tablet in the little bottle and just keep topping it up so i've always got electrolytes on the go and then the big one's always just water so i can just hydrate with that and use that for cooking and cups of coffee and stuff. I read that there's not a lot of water sources once you get up onto this ridge. And this ridge is, I think it's like 28 kilometers long or something. It's a long, it's a big full day just walking along the ridge because it's up and down, basically up and down mountains all day. And there's not a lot of uh, water supply. so. That's why I've got my big bottle. I thought, just before I go up onto the ridge, fill the big bottle, fill the little bottle, and that should see me for the day. I think I've done my first goof. I think I've missed a sty in the fence. And I uh, just kept going. Uh, because the fence leads off over there. I'm still not convinced. 
didn't mention it in guidebook. Maybe it's at the top, I'll go and have a look anyway. Ooh. Is that it? Have I goofed? Yeah. <laughs> That's it, look. I've gone up there because it's a path. There's a slight path up there. And I've gone up there thinking, surely not off that because where does it lead to? I was like, I looked on here and I thought, nah, there's nothing off here, but it must be this way, look. We're in a bit off road there. Feet are soaking now, so we're, we've arrived and uh, picked up a bit of a trail right on the edge of the cliff. And the wind is howling that way. So when I get close, I'm like, whoop, put on my weight that way. Just, I feel like I'm going to get blown off the end. But it's still spectacular. I'm weather beaten. But I'm glad it ain't raining as well, because that would be... Whoo. I mean, this is what it's going to be for the second half of this hike. It's forecast some bad weather, so... Just going to have to suck it up, buttercup, and have a good time regardless. Um, because the views... As you can see, look at that. Special stuff. You snoozing? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. I'm friendly. It's gonna get foggy, fog myrtle. Look, shifts in time. Putting a shift in. I'll do at least one of these a day. Or I've been beaten, haven't I? <laughs> Different story, innit? Day one's always very optimistic. Day six, sideways rain. Walking back to the camera. <laughs> it's a state of mind, isn't it? And I've got a state of mind. Look at that. Calm down, Lord of the Rings. Lovely section, this. Finished, finished with the coastal bit for now. That was beautiful. I'm just a, uh, and now we've cut inland <laughs> into the mountains. How nice is it out the wind? I'll tell you something, if the wind is just coming this way, and that these, these mountains are protecting me from the wind then it could be okay because I'll be able to put a shift in today get up the top and hopefully optimistically there'll be like a ledge or a, a little bit that I can go down on this side when it gets dark enough and then just pitch my tent and up at best because you don't want to be up there when the winds are kicking off. And that's one of the reasons, besides like piss and everything, uh, that's one of the reasons why I didn't make it last time because it was forecast to be absolutely abysmal when I was up there. And it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it, it's just not safe. It's a bit, and it's not fair on people. If you get into trouble, it's not fair mainly on the people that have to come and save you. You know, the Power Rangers, Mountain Rescue, whatever, whoever, Super Ted. It's 
breathtaking. The beauty of it. Look. I brought my drone as well. Like I brought too much stuff, I think. But I brought my drone, but it's too windy. It's a bit calm here, but you can tell by how fast the clouds are going up there that it's no joke. We're just protected by this huge wall. There are other hikers about and uh, we don't want to be ruining the, tr ruining the tranquility, do you? With bzzz <laughs> and drone. So I'll just do this. Whee! You get the idea. Anyway, I, I'm trying to bring you as much of, as I can as far as the views and stuff just through this, just doing it like this. All the like time lapses and, and um, night lapses and drone shots and things like that. I'll have to, they're best served on the, like a one or two night camp. Peaceful. And anyway, I don't even know why I'm justifying it. This is just what it is. It's beautiful. And you can see it's beautiful without me having to fly a drone up in the air. Cut to a drone shot. Come all the way around here. The first stop in the Cicero guidebook was at that hotel that I passed quite a while ago. So I've overshot that and I'm at the start of the ridge bit, which is very exposed. There's nowhere really to hide and it's still pretty windy. It isn't forecast to get any windier than this. It's about eight hours to get to the end of this of this ridge. So I'm definitely not gonna do it tonight unless I wanna walk in the dark. I'm just thinking, because there's a lot of, you know, up and down the mountains, I'm just thinking maybe in the low bits there might be somewhere to camp or um, there might be just some sort of feature that I can get behind and find somewhere that I can just stick the old wigwam. Um, if my tent can't handle winds like this, then what's the point in having a tent? And what's the point in being out here? So cracking on mate i'm not gonna, just gonna sit in my tent for hours not doing out so we're heading up onto the uh the ridge now which is apparently this is the hardest section of the entire hike not doing much distance but lots of ups and downs very exposed that was one of my things was like ah if i get caught out it's so exposed but i'm looking around here and i'm like well where isn't exposed it's windy everywhere and then I thought well I could maybe drop down to this lock right down there maybe have a swim and have a camp but I'm looking at the surface of the water and the wind is just dancing off it so I'll be no better off down there so there you go that was my thoughts and I'm off pushing on It'll be like up here to the very top of there and then down again, like up and down valley. So we'll see. Proper leg pumper. to look back where I've come from cutting through these jagged rocks here round and up if you've got vertigo this isn't the place to come oh. <laughs> keep it no no you can see many, many of them to do tomorrow. In a moment of complete hedonism, I just necked all the water. <laughs> so basically just gonna fill it up again 
using this puddle otherwise I can't have any dinner tonight I mean like I said before it's worth I don't you know besides like little puddles like this and whatnot I don't think there's much how brown that is I don't think I'll just have to do it a little bit at a time uh, yeah I don't think there's much in the way of water up here so you've got to make do with what you find so I'm just going to spend a little bit of time filling up my water bottles I'll make sure they're both properly full it is a bit of a labour of love I'll leave, I'll leave a link for everything that I use down uh, below the video and I will have done already a what's in my bag video so you can check that out if you want to know all the stuff I'm using and where to get it I've come round here down here and now gotta go up the other side and that's pretty much what it's like along here it's still day one morale is high I don't mind doing these miles and going up and down because you have views like this just everywhere I look it's views it'd be nice to have a little bit less wind just because so, it just calms everything down a little bit but at least I can see it's famous for fogging over so that you can't see up here so I'm lucky visibility is on point what's this if this is a strategic shelter I might have to have it or is it just full of sheep shit no I don't know is it that's really nice it's a bit wet though is a bit wet oh. oh but I'm out of the wind it's feel I feel like I haven't been out of wind for so long all day stay here question mark right what I'm gonna do is have a proper look at my map and see where I'm at because it's five o'clock now I could I could if I look at the map and it's brutal and there's not going out going on could easy just figure something out here because I'm loving being out of the wind I'm loving being out of the wind it's nice calming I'll have a look at the map and then decide decisions been made executive decision staying here simply for this bit of shelter I'm sure I can find a level level area I'll move all these rocks around and that and get a pitch there because it, it's the first real bit of respite that I've had. So whoever, whoever's built this wall, thanks. Look, cause it's, feet up there. Now I've got a little wind muff on you, so you probably can't. Can you see the wind? No. Anyway, it's windy. And if I didn't find anywhere like this, it's just I'm gonna I'm I'm exposed and tents just giving it all that and it flapping around like a lunatic. Oh trekking poles are going through it though. Whee! What I'll do is I'll I'll lower the hiking poles and lower my tent close to the floor. It's just so much more peaceful here. So that's it. I mean I mean it's decent, isn't it? I'm enjoying it. Decent views. But, you know, if I was making a standalone video, I would probably want to go up to one of these peaks and get some nice views of the sunset and that, but this is the long haul. I'm playing the long game and sensible game, so I'm just going to tuck behind this. I said tuck, not hide. I'm not hiding, I'm tucking. What's all that white shit? Floating to the top. I did get this water out of a puddle. I did filter it as well, but... I'm going to get this onto a rolling boil and, and boil it for a while as well. Just wear on the side of caution because you don't want the shite while you're up here. So that's on a rolling boil now. I'm going to leave that to do its thing to keep boiling. Boil all them calamities away. Look. Hey, look. For dinner. Vegetable hot pot. And I'm ready for it. Veggie hot pot, mate. These are one of the best ones that Adventure Food do, actually. The veggie hot pot what is the meat if you when you when you get these like you know 
these sort of meals, these camping meals. Oh, it's cold now, look. Oh, what's the Phil Neville? 11. Yeah, when you get these camping meals, I forgot what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, what are the meat in them anyway? Just like, what is the texture of that? It could be anything, couldn't it? Just chuck a few, <laughs> God knows what. It could be anything, yeah. It's not like a succulent bit of chicken, is it? It's just other random textures, so I don't really care too much of what's in it. It's more of a texture thing and a flavor thing. And the flavor and texture of the, these uh, veg hot pots is good. But stay tuned for my, uh, I'm going to be doing some proper camp uh, hiking meal reviews. I'm saving it for a rainy day when I can do them, you know, when Ed's gone. <laughs> when Ed's gone and I can't get out hiking, I can hide somewhere, can't I? And just film myself eating these things. And you'll know when I do. When the next video is a ration meal video, you'll know Ed's gone. There they are. Not too shabby. And the wind is just catching the tops of it. It's a bit baggy at this side, but I would have had to have put it too far that way, so I've had to come tight to the wall and just go straight down with this guy line. I've put rocks all around as well, doubling up. It shouldn't go anywhere. Might just be a bit loud, but it's safe and sound. <laughs> and then Lanshan 2, back out. Go on, boy. Just tightening up. <laughs> yes! Woo! <laughs> oh mate, it feels good. It feels good. It feels good to have started this man. Out here on me Todd as just watching the sun go down behind that hill. There's me wigwam set up. Yeah, still pretty sheltered behind this wall. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. And tomorrow we head that way and take on the toughest section of this hike. When it all goes to hell, will you still be my friend? here this is the start or the end depending on which way you want to do it if I just pan out there you can see this is the north of the island and we want to be heading south but first we head off north up to Rua Hunish so we set off up here nice little walk just to get the legs going up to this old lookout which is now used as a bothy you can choose to go down onto this knob and have a look around here, but I didn't do that. I stayed at the top here, had a little chat to this bloke, and straight away it is stunning views. In the right time of year, you can see mink whales, you can see porpoise, dolphin. There's all sorts of wildlife going on. 
So along here, down here, got wet feet already coming down here, past this graveyard, past these few houses, around, then you hit the coast here, and it is quite tough walking up and down these ridges, but again, beautiful views, stunning rugged coastline along here. We keep going along. I goofed here, I sort of kept going along here, which I suppose I could have gone, but I doubled back over the sty, down through this boggy area, not much path to be found here, and along past the hostel. So this would be the end of the first day in the guidebook. I chose to push on a little bit through these woods, and then we hit a little bit of road here for a section, not long, and it's nice smooth tarmac past the lock and then we were up into the mountains with a little bit of shelter from the wind which was glorious and the views and the scenery up here it was just breathtaking through the Kerrang beautiful scenery all around here there's a bit of a car park here so it's, it is quite busy I had a bit of a ponder here deciding whether to continue up but I carried on going up onto the ridge how's your look it wasn't too bad. Found a lovely little camp spot behind some stones here. And that's where I'm pitched for night one. And there we go. I'll put my stats on there now so you can have a quick look. And there we go. That's night one. If you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. Hit the bell notification down here to be notified when part two is out. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Thank you.